Hello, I'm Justin from Embedded Micro, and welcome to another Chalk Talk. In this video, I'm going to be talking about logic gates. Logic gates are the basic building blocks to any digital circuit or logic function. It's kind of similar to how addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division are the core building blocks to any mathematical function. There are four basic kinds of logic gates, AND gates, OR gates, XOR, and NOT gates. First, I'm going to be talking about the NOT gate. The symbol for a NOT gate looks something like this, where you have a single input and a single output. It's actually the only logic gate that has one input. Now, it's, it's important to note that while we're talking about logic functions, there are only two valid types of values that an input or output can take. That is true or false, 0 or 1, or high or low. These three sets are interchangeable for most purposes. To understand how this gate works, it sometimes helps to draw something that's known as a truth table. The truth table for a NOT gate looks like this. So this just correlates the inputs to the outputs. So you can see if you apply a 0 to the input, you get a 1 at the output. If you apply a 1 to the input, you get a 0 at the output. So it simply inverts the input to the output. In other words, the output is not the input. The next gate we're going to look at is the AND gate. The AND gate symbol looks like this, where you have two inputs and one output. And what this gate does is when the first input and the second input are 1, then the output will be 1. Otherwise, the output is 0. The truth table for this looks something like this. And in this table, this is one of the inputs, so I'll call it A, and this is input B. So I'll say this is A and B, and then these are the outputs. So since we have two inputs this time, uh, it's easy. It's easier to draw it with one of the sides as one of the inputs, and the top is the other input. Then when you want to look up, say, when the input is 0, 1, you would simply look for row 0 and column 1 and realize that the output here is 0. The next gate we're going to look at is the OR gate. An OR gate has a symbol that looks like this. And what it does is when either OR of the inputs is 1, it'll output a 1. Otherwise, it'll output a 0. So it has a truth table that looks like this. So when either one of these inputs are 1, the output is 1. Finally, the last gate is an XOR gate, and it has a symbol that looks like this. What an XOR gate does is that it only outputs 1 if either of the inputs are 1, but not both. In other words, it's an exclusive OR. So it has a truth table like this. So you can see it's only outputting 1 when one of the inputs is 0 and the other input is 1. When both of them are 1 or both of them are 0, it outputs 0. So it's only 1 when the outputs are different. Now, so far, I've only shown you the basic two-input versions of these logic gates. However, you'll often see uh, different versions where there's multiple inputs, say three or four inputs. Now, these are really just uh, multiple of the two-input versions chained together. For example, to make a three-input AND gate, you have something that looks like this. Where you have your inputs A, B, and C, and then your, your single output. And now for the output to be 1, inputs A, B, and C all have to be 1. Now, you can draw a very similar circuit for OR gates, and then if either I, if input A, B, or C is 1, then the output will be 1. When you think about the same thing for an XOR gate, it gets a little bit more complicated, uh, and it gets a little confusing. So the way to think about that is you simply count the number of 1s at the input, and then if it's odd, then the output will be 1. If it's even, then the output will be 0. That means that if, uh, for example, for a circuit like this, if 
A, B, or C is 1, then the output will be 1. And if A, B, and C are all 1, then the output will also be 1, because those are the only two cases where the number of 1s on the input are odd. It's very common to actually stick a NOT gate at the output of one of the other logic gates. It's so common that they actually have a variation in their own names for each of the three basic logic gates that I've shown. So the AND gate, with its output inverted, looks like this, and it's called a NAND gate. Uh, to designate that it's the output's inverted, you put a little bubble like this at the output. The same thing goes for the OR and XOR gates, and they are called NOR and XNOR gates, respectively. There's actually something that's a little special about NAND gates, and that is that they are what is known as universal logic. That means that using only a NAND gate, you can implement any different kind of logic function. To illustrate this, I'm going to draw the four basic logic gates that we talked about earlier using only the NAND gate. To draw a NOT gate, you simply take a single NAND gate and connect its two inputs together. This way, when you apply 1, both inputs are 1, the AND gate would normally output a 1 then, but since it's inverted, it outputs a 0. So it, basically, it acts exactly the same as a NOT gate. To do an AND gate, you simply take a NAND gate, and invert the output. So these inverters basically cancel. An OR gate is simply a NAND gate with two inverters on the inputs. And finally, an XOR is a little bit more complicated and it looks something like this. So this shows you that you can make those four basic logic gates out of just NAND gates, and using any of those basic four logic gates, you can make any logic function. I hope this video has given you a basic understanding of the various logic gates and their functions. Make sure to head over to embeddedmicro.com for lots more tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.